Hey friends, I'm Jake, and today we're going to be tackling the hot topic that is source of truth. So in previous episodes, we talked about this idea that design and development kind of live in these two hemispheres, and design is really concerned with what we want, right? With the direction we're headed, um, the improvements we want to make to interfaces, and development is kind of very much aware of like what we actually have. And in communication, designers are kind of really trying to convey what the intentions are of a design uh, and, and to see that through, through development. And developers are coming back with what the implications of those design decisions are, right? And so you have this kind of back and forth of intent and implications, and this can be really good. It can also cause conflict at times. The ultimate goal of this kind of collaboration is to have what we want be what we have, right? Instead of what we want and what we have being separate, we're trying to align on like like the best thing that we can build together. So what is truth when you have two different kind of drivers on each of these sides? The reality is that truth could be fuzzy. In the last video, we talked about four quadrants, right? You have the patterns underlying the product on top. On the left side, you have product design and the patterns that kind of support it. And on the right side, you have product development and the patterns that support that. And as we begin to have those communications across design and development of what we want and what we have, we're often left with this, where there's a shared reality for the two of us, right? A shared kind of truth. But there's also a lot of stuff on the edges that aren't shared for one reason or another. And so today we're going to look at some of the reasons why we get into that state. The first scenario I have is this thing I'm calling the design systems work in progress. And in this scenario, you have designers, right, who are, you know, pushing the product forward without an underlying design system yet. Um, and so they're sketching something and it doesn't look this ugly, but it doesn't necessarily conform to patterns that may exist in code. And as your developers kind of build this out, they kind of read between the lines and they start to kind of create some patterns around what they're perceiving on the design side. And what gets shipped is kind of this functional thing that has these underlying patterns. Well, as your product grows, your design systems team maybe becomes more formalized and you start building out a design system and a design tool, right? And that's what's happening here on the left. We're, we're saying, hey, our brand, we're kind of committing to this pattern. And your component library on the code side makes those changes, right? So we go from kind of this thicker, more round kind of shape to kind of what designers have said are, you know, these are the patterns we want to align on for a design side. And what ends up happening, one like really nice thing about this is that your product just adapts, right? Because it's using these components under the hood. And so if these components are having styles applied to them on the code side, right, in the product itself, those changes get applied instantly. But what you're left with is product designs that no longer match what's in production, right? It's no longer, they, they're similar references, but they, they aren't using the design system because they weren't created when a design system existed. The design system came later. And so in this scenario, your source of truth is really the product that's in production in code and then the design system that's in your design world, right? These are kind of your two sources of truth here. Here's another scenario. I call this one a quick polish. So in this scenario, you're doing everything right. You have a product design that's using a design system on the design side and you have, you know, your product development is following, implementing a component library properly. But what ends up happening is after you've kind of like pushed this to prod, you're reviewing it with your designer and they're like, you know what, we should just make this little tweak, right? We're going to move things around a tiny bit. And so you're going from one state into another. And what ends up happening then is you're left with this scenario, right? You don't go back to the design file to make those tweaks because you just did it on the fly with the designer, you know, in person and you just made a better decision in code after the fact. Well, in this scenario, your design no longer matches what's in prod. And so again, your source of truth is what's sitting in production. You know, that's the most up-to-date version of the feature. And your design system is also on the design side kind of anchoring, you know, the truth there. This one I call work with what we got. And so in this world, you have a product design that's using a design system in a design file the right way. And then in your code base, you have component library that's similar, but you know, maybe it's using an old style, old design system, whatever it is, right? And so we can see in the bottom right hand corner, we have kind of a more squared, thicker kind of component library. For whatever reason, you can't justify the effort to update the design system right now. 
And what you end up being forced to do is implement with the component library you have in code. Oftentimes this is the most efficient, best thing to do until you can get back to updating your design system uh, in code. And so what you're left with is a design that doesn't look anything like what's in prod stylistically, but is functionally kind of the same pattern. And in this scenario, right, well, your source of truth is in the design file, right? Your, your feature designs are actually the most up-to-date and they're using the design system, which is also the most up-to-date. So let's talk about kind of what source of truth is when you have all of this. Earlier, we were talking about kind of two overlapping circles and what's shared and what isn't. But the reality is, is there's more than two circles, right? We have kind of the product design that's happening, the design patterns that are hopefully supporting that effort. And we have the product development and the development patterns or component libraries or whatever they are underlying that effort. And so we really kind of have these four circles. And when these start to overlap, we have a lot of different points. And, and truth is kind of like the combination of all these different intersections. Like the truth is what's there. So when this is the case, we need to be asking ourselves, what do we want? What do we have? And what's the difference? Truth is a combination of all of these things. We have a need for tools to show us what exists in code. We have a need for tools to show us what exists in design. We have a need for tools to compare those things. We have a need for tools to help us translate what's in design to what's in code when we're implementing a feature, especially when they don't match. We need things to make that easier for us. The truth for a lot of teams is that things are not the same. And when things are not the same, you either need to understand how you can drive alignment between those things or how to bridge those gaps and translate. In a work in progress world, sometimes translation is more efficient than alignment. Hope this was helpful. I'm Jake signing off for 7 Minute Snippets. Hope you have a great week.